This is King's Road, London in the late 1960s, and this is the same road in the year 2024. Did you notice any changes in both pictures? Well, obviously yes. Just like in the infrastructural development, technological advances have also taken place in the same time. That is, from the 1960s. Can you ever imagine a life without the internet? Or a life where there were only three entertainment channels on television? A life like that seems almost unimaginable. Watching a YouTube video or scrolling through Instagram is not possible in this era. It's kind of terrifying to think about. But there was a time where people lived without any of the things that we have now. How has technology changed the way that we survive since the 1960s? Are we better off? Or have we become too dependent on it? What would survival look like without all the gadgets we use today? Let's take a deeper look into this. Technology is the application of conceptual knowledge to achieve practical goals. Is that too complicated? Let me break it down. Technology is the tools, machines, or systems humans create to make life easier. From the invention of the wheel to the invention of Wi-Fi, microwaves, and apps like WhatsApp and Instagram, all of these are results of the evolution of technology. Technological advancements have redefined not only how we meet our basic needs, but also how we adapt to the fast-changing world around us. But since when do you think it all started? The beginning era of technological advances was actually in the 1960s. The 1960s was a transformative decade for technology. It was a period marked by innovative advancements that shaped the future of human life. This era was considered as the era of rapid innovation and a shift towards technological possibilities that were once thought to be science fiction. Let's see what all technological advancements from the 1960s have changed our idea of survival. The first one is communication. In the 1960s, communication was a lot more different than the instant connectivity we enjoy today. Even though significant changes had happened in the 1960s, it was still difficult to communicate. Imagine waiting in a queue to call someone, and when your chance arrived, you can't even talk privately to that person. Landlines weren't much popular those days, but it was still in use by some people. It was indeed a revolutionary technology that allowed long-distance communication. However, the long queues made it time-consuming and it's expensive, as it was new to the world. Most of the people in the 1960s used to write letters, but letters took days or weeks to get delivered. There was no WhatsApp or Instagram to spontaneously call someone and ask something. Guys, think about how difficult it would have been to communicate with somebody. In the 1960s, television, radio, and newspapers were the primary source of information and entertainment. Now, if we fast forward to the present scenario, it's a huge difference, am I right? We got the internet, and it's taking communication to the next level by providing a platform to connect with each other all over the world. And not only the internet, we have mobile phones to stay connected 24-7, sending text messages, and to communicate easily with someone and have private talks with, which wasn't possible through landlines back in the 60s. Another important change is the communication sector in video conferencing and remote work. This has completely changed the way we connect and big thanks to our big brains behind it because our world cannot run anymore without these. Even big companies use this technology to make virtual teams consisting of members from various parts of the world work together. And then there's social media, which at this point doesn't need an explanation. We actually can't live without social media these days and has helped us connect with people and never lose relationships that we were always fond of keeping. Social media has also contributed in letting the world know about the serious issues happening around the world and also help people to voice out their point of views to the world. Communication in the present has made our lives a lot easier, but on the flip side, it's also brought problems like fake news, cyberbullying, and privacy concerns. Next up is the health section. Before the 60s, having a heart surgery or any other major surgery was risky, as one out of 10 patients never survived the surgery. But in the 1960s, the development of heart-lung machines made open-heart surgeries possible, and the rate of survival increased quite a bit. Surgeons were able to stop the heart but keep the body alive with the help of this machine. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Advances in pacemakers, defibrillators, and artificial organs helped to keep people alive who would have otherwise lost their lives to some disease. Another game changer in the health industry was the polio vaccine in the 1960s. The introduction of the polio vaccine is one of the reasons why we are still living in the world without getting prone to polio disease to a great extent. The 60s was the era for technological advancements in every single sector. The health sector isn't quite over yet. 
The use of antibiotics became more widely used and has helped humans be immune from infections and diseases to a great extent. Antibiotics helped humans have longer lifespans and healthier populations. Medical imaging sector has also been advanced with the invention of CT scans and x-rays. This helps doctors to detect problems more easily and provide care at the right time before things get out of hand too late. Though the 1960s had brought some of the best innovations to the world, most of Americans, especially the elderly and low income, lack insurance coverage. The costs were too high to afford, and compared to the present, they had very little technological advancements and the treatment was limited as some of the cure was not even discovered at that time. Moving forward to the present state, America has one of the best healthcare facilities in the world and people from across the world come to America for treatments. Also, different insurance and policies are provided for those who cannot afford hospital expenses to help cover. Unlike the 1960s, the present era has a cure to almost every disease and immediate treatments are done for the needy. This has increased the life expectancy of humans compared to the 60s era. Up next is that of the environmental consciousness and green technology. During the 1960s, industrialism and technological progress was the main aim for Americans, ignoring the environmental impacts. Factories let out harmful smoke in the air, rivers were contaminated with waste, and natural resources were getting used up due to urbanization. This all happened until 1962. A book was the eye-opener for Americans to change their minds to protect the environment. What book was it, and who wrote the book? In 1962, Rachel Carson published the book called Silent Spring. The book was a warning to Americans about the dangers of pesticides, especially DDT. This led the Americans to realize the effects of increasing industrialization by harming the environment and that could cause their lives to be at stake. So, 1962 was the year where people began understanding the value of protecting their environment. Everyone realized that technological advancements are not only required in health and well-being sector, but also in other sectors, especially the environmental sector. Concerns about pollution and depletion of natural resources came into the notice of environmentalists and they began working to solve the problems one by one. One of the solutions provided by them, which is related to water, is reverse osmosis technology. The emergence of this technology has helped the humans take water from the rivers and lakes and get purified enough for human consumption. Another important technological change that was discovered in the 60s was the rise of renewable energy, but it was not as popular as it is today. This is important because it reduces the usage of fossil fuels in a significant manner. Solar panels, wind turbines, and nuclear power plants were used more and it helped in protecting our planet as well. By 1970, the first Earth Day was celebrated on the 22nd of April, which marked an important movement with millions of Americans actually participating in events that protect our environment, such as protests, cleanup drives, educational programs provided for students, and a lot more. Even laws such as the Environmental Protection Act of 1970 Clean Air Act in 1970 and the Clean Water Act in 1972 have aimed to reduce pollution and protect natural resources. There was little infrastructure for recycling or waste management and sustainability was recognized as a goal for industries or individuals, but it was on its road to action. The present isn't contributing much to our environment. The rising temperatures, climate change, wildfires, and guys, don't you know what happened in Saudi Arabia this year? A country which is meant to be dry and hot started snowing, and that's in the desert. It might be amazing to watch, but think about the cause behind it. There's a hint given by the Earth to us. We're supposed to help our Earth get greener and reduce pollutants. We must protect our Earth more carefully, or else we will be dead for sure. Solar panel and wind energy have made significant moves in the United States of America, becoming one of the global leaders in renewable energy production. Electric vehicles are another area where green technology has taken off into the next level. Companies like Tesla have changed the automobile industry, pushing major car manufacturers to also move towards electric and hybrid vehicle options. Innovations like carbon capture technology, green hydrogen, and even lab-grown meat are on the rise. Let us wait and watch to see if this will become a hit or not. In waste management, we have come a long way since the 1960s as well. Recycling and composting has become more efficient and households began making their own compost pits on their land. This has significantly reduced landfill waste and biodegradable items, but still the problem persists within the world. And let's move on to the next one, which is entertainment. Back in the 1960s, there used to be only two to three channels on the television and everyone and family watched it together 
as their source of entertainment. If any shows were missed, there weren't any apps like Netflix or other OTT apps to rewatch it. In today's world, we have laptops, mobile phones, smart televisions, iPads, and a lot more gadgets to watch the shows whenever and wherever we want. This was only possible due to the invention of the internet and other OTT apps. These days, there's now a concept of binge watching, which is watching a show on repeat several times even after finishing the whole show. All of these have brought a good amount of entertainment to our lives, but it's also broken up families. Now, how do you think this might have broken families up? How many of you guys and gals sit back and talk to your parents for more than two hours face to face, open heartedly without any gadgets in front of you? I'm sure that more than 50% of the people don't do that on a regular basis, maybe even monthly. That's how human behavior is changing year after year. There's no family time, and nowadays kids are completely addicted to all of the gadgets available to them. We should change this and let the kids grow without using these gadgets from a young age itself. Next on our list is workplace conditions. In the 1960s, workplaces were a far cry from the tech-savvy environments we see today. All the work was done using typewriters and it always took lots of time to complete the work as it was typed manually, letter by letter, which demands precision and patience. And if there was any mistake, the work would all be in vain and they'd have to do it all over again. Additionally, if the employees wanted a copy of something, they used carbon paper in between pages to get the exact copy of what was typed. Using a carbon copy was a tiring and time-consuming job. But I have a question. If a company has offices in various states and a worker of one office has to send a message to another officer in another office, what would you do? Well, obviously you would draft an email and send it to the right person. Five minute job, right? But that wasn't possible in the 1960s. They had to send a letter and wait for a response, which would take days or even weeks. And in comparison to our current workplace conditions, it would be like heaven for people who used to work in the 1960s. We have computers everywhere, typewriters are long gone, and they've been replaced by word processors like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, where you can easily type, edit, and even fix mistakes within seconds. And carbon copies? I don't think any kid knows what that would be in this era. Instead of using a carbon copy, the documents are stored on the cloud, or it's easily printed using a printer and stored in a file cabinet. Letters have also been replaced with emails, and working together in different locations is made easier with platforms like Zoom and Microsoft Teams, and a lot of other virtual platforms like them. No matter how distant they are, these platforms always make them feel like they are in the same room working together. Can you imagine how much time has been saved with these new inventions? But let's not forget the roots. The 1960s was the era for all of these developments. Additionally, technology has changed life to be easier in the household as well. Let me show you how. In the 1960s, technology was a lot more basic, but still pretty revolutionary for its time. Most homes had a black and white TV, a landline phone, maybe a radio. Families would gather around the TV in the evenings to watch the few shows that would be available. Household chores were done manually and people cooked meals on traditional stoves, cleaned with brooms, and washed clothes by hand or in a basic washing machine. But this was actually not the condition of every house. Some houses didn't even have a landline to communicate with or a washing machine to wash their clothes with. The present is just so different from all of this. Today we have smart TVs, microwaves, dishwashers to clean the plates, smart refrigerators, and even cleaning robots. We can even set up the whole house with the help of artificial intelligence to switch on and off lights. That's how fast the world is changing. Maybe in another 50 years, folks will look back and think we had a hard time living with whatever we have today. And how about we move to our final section? Transportation. Let us travel back in time and see how transportation was like in the 1960s. Back then, cars were considered a luxury. Though people loved the classic American muscle cars like the Ford Mustang and Chevrolet Corvette, these cars weren't high-tech like they are today. They were big, heavy, and sometimes too difficult to handle. But I agree, their style was phenomenal. But here's the kicker. Even if a family had a car and they were going for a trip, they used the navigation boards and physical maps to locate a place. Imagine how hard that would be today. If you got lost someplace, you would be doomed for real. There were no GPS to tell you the quickest route, nor were there touchscreens in the car or Bluetooth to listen to music. These cars had minimal safety as well. There were no safety airbags to save you from any accidents. If you got into a major accident, you might as well just consider yourself dead. Sounds pretty scary, doesn't it? But that's because we were not used to having all these routines that we have in our daily lives today, and we were living in a much more advanced stage today than we were back then. Apart from cars, 
public transportation was widely used in the 1960s, but it wasn't as connected as it is today. You cannot track where your bus has reached using your phone. Instead, you would wait at the bus stop, hoping that it would reach you on time and was the only option that was possible in the 1960s. Airways were considered a luxury, only the richest used to travel by airway, and it's also changed a lot from our present day airways. But if we fast forward to the 21st century, we see self-driving cars on the road, and that's pretty mind-blowing. We have features like GPS navigation, backup cameras, voice controlled assistance, and electric cars that are eco-friendly and fast. And we shouldn't forget ride-sharing apps like Uber and Lyft. Don't have a car? That's alright. Just pull out your phone, book a ride, the driver will reach you in minutes. Today, we have low-cost airlines like Southwest and Ryanair making it easier to fly around the world. The technology in planes is more advanced as well. New planes are faster, safer, and much more comfortable. There is a massive change in the transportation sector from paper maps and big cars to electric vehicles and self-driving tech. The future of travel seems quite exciting, and who knows what's next, maybe flying cars, or even faster trains. Which one do you think would come first? Comment below your answer. This might have been a dream for the people who used to live in the 1960s. That's how fast we're developing technology. These are the technological advances which changed our idea of survival in the 1960s. But here's my question to you, viewer, and I hope you give me an honest answer. If you get a chance to travel back in time, would you rather live in the 1960s or stay in the present year? Let me know. Personally, I think I would probably stay where I am. It's pretty comfy over here. Also, if you're kind enough, please let us grow our YouTube family by giving us a like and sharing the video with your friends, family, and relatives. Please click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon for timely updates. Thanks to you folks for supporting us. Also, have you ever wondered what the dark side of TV shows are? You should check out this video. Go ahead, click on it. You should do it. All right. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one.